I've been intrigued by the account of the last days of a young girl who died and was buried in this historic cemetery 157 years ago. I've been to the cemetery, but never before to her grave. Hi, so welcome to this episode of History Hunters. There's a fairly recent book that came out it's called Heaven is for Real. It was about a three-year-old named Colton Burpo who claimed that he had an experience of going to heaven after an emergency appendectomy. Will you call some friends and pray for him? The hospital staff said that your son was not expected to survive. Use the word miracle. Your son had a near-death experience. That was a very popular film and a very popular book. By 2014, it had grossed over $100 million in revenue. Basically, he told stories that Colton would have had no prior knowledge about. He saw things that I can't really explain. He said some pretty amazing things. Like in 1998, he knew somehow that his mother had given birth to a miscarried sister of his. He also told stories about his grandfather who passed away 30 years before. But during Abraham Lincoln's days, there was a girl who was dying and she told some stories that uh, indicated that she was making contact through the veil to the other side. And I'm gonna tell you all about Daisy Dryden on this episode of History Hunters. <music> Daisy Dryden's mother decided to publish a story about Daisy Dryden's last experiences here on Earth. It was called, entitled Daisy Dryden, a memoir. It was published by Boston Colonial Press. It sold many copies. A lot of people were astounded by the stories. Now, even today, it remains controversial. Did Daisy actually experience what she experienced by seeing through the veil and talking to people on the other side? Or was she merely just hallucinating from the fevers that she suffered. I think what resonated to me is that Daisy died at the age of 10, and that's the exact age that my cousin Sandra died of leukemia back in 1975. Sadly, Daisy's in section 25, which is a non-endowment care section, and uh, a lot of grass here. I got my feet wet searching for her grave, and I, I found it right over here, it's probably about three feet tall. And right here, on the side, you'll see the name of Daisy. Daisy was born September 9th, 1854 in Marysville, California. She died October 8th, 1864, at the age of 10 in San Jose. A little monument here. Now also buried here are her siblings and their names are over on this side. And we've got Nellie and we've got Albion Dryden, gone yet living. Their parents were Christians. Her dad was a minister. Grave behind there of Zachariah Schwartz died in 1880, 31 years old. Daisy only had 10 years. Some of the things said about Daisy is that she was a stubborn individual, very bright child, and one day she saw her dad crying. And she asked her father what was wrong, said that her mother was deathly ill. So she said, let's pray to God that she would be healed. And lo and behold, she was healed. She was unlike a lot of children because she was never afraid of the dark. She said, there's nothing in the dark that's not there in the light, which really, if you think about it, she was a very wise child for her age. It was also said that she loved being out in nature. She loved flowers. At one time she had a little watering pot. One day a lady was passing and said, Daisy, what are you doing? She said, oh, giving the flowers a drink and you ought to see them laugh. She was very fond of pansies and daisies. Pansies because she could see faces in them and daisies because of her own name. One day in the garden, she said, let us have daisies everywhere we go if we can have nothing else. Daisy was the daughter of Reverend David Anderson and his wife. She was named Daisy because she was such a petite child with such large, luminous brown eyes. Her mother recalled Daisy being very strong-willed and stubborn at times. She had a quick temper. There would be a sudden fire in those brown eyes and angry words would follow and then there would just be a sudden repentance. So in the summer of 1864, Daisy came down with typhoid fever. She was ill for at least five weeks. 
trying to break her fever and it appeared that she was getting better for a time. She was very compliant. She was given a shining little half dollar for, by her doctor who said, this is for the girl who takes her medicine so faithfully. Now, while everybody thought she was getting better, Daisy seemed to have a premonition that she was not going to recover. So when her mother talked about them moving from San Jose back to Nevada City, Daisy sadly said, Mother, I believe that you're going to go there, but I don't think you're going to take me with you. Daisy's condition continued to grow worse. One evening, she was staring out into space, and she was asked what she was staring at. She said, I see Jesus. That very night, she fell ill once again, this time with enteritis, and thus started four days of visions before her death. According to her mother, the first 24 hours were the worst because Daisy couldn't eat, drink, or take any kind of medication. She claimed that she felt no pain, but her mind was still sharp. Her sister would sing to her from their hymnal and she would recite poetry. She also enjoyed having her parents read her the Bible. Sometime during her last days, she said that Allian, or Albion, her brother had passed away seven months prior of typhoid fever, would come and visit her. So that her parents said, ask Albion some questions that only Albion would know if he was truly in heaven. And she says, okay, I'll wait until he arrives. Then I'll ask him then. Her mother claimed that Daisy was living in both worlds for the last three days of her life. She told her father, there is no curtain. There's not even a line that separates this life from the other life. And then she stretched out her hand from the bed with a gesture said, it is here and it is here. I know it is so for I can see you all and I can see them there at the same time. Daisy told her visitors that she could see to the other side and communicate with their dead loved ones. She informed her mother, no one, unless they have dying eyes, can see spirits. Daisy loved when her sister Lulu would come sing to her and always enjoyed her favorite, O Come Angel Band. The lyrics go something like, O come angel band, come and around me stand, O bear me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home. One time when Lulu was done singing, O come angel band, she said, oh, isn't it strange? We always thought that angels had wings but they don't. And the sister asked, well, how do they move around then? And she said, they just think and they can move about. When she was asked how she could communicate with the dead without her lips moving, she said, we just think. According to page 46 of the book, Daisy was quoted as singing into heaven when she said, I can see ever so far and you could not begin to count the people. Some are near and I know them, others I have never seen before. Daisy claimed to encounter a woman named Mary, who was an acquaintance from their days in Nevada City. Daisy told her mother, you know, she had such a bad cough, but she's well now, and so beautiful, and she's smiling to me. On the day that she died, Daisy asked her mother to fetch a mirror and stared at her reflection a while. This body of mine is about wore out, and it's like that old dress of mama's hanging there in the closet. She doesn't wear it anymore, and I won't wear my body anymore. You will lay my body in the grave because I will not need it again. Her mother opened the shutters at Daisy's request so she could look outside one last time as she bid farewell to the sky, the trees, the flowers, and said goodbye, beautiful world. How I love it, but I do not wish to stay. At 8.30 p.m., Daisy told her mother that her brother Allie had informed her that he would come for her at 11.30 she rested in the arms of her dad and waited. By 11.30 p.m., Daisy told her father that Allie was there to take her away. She lifted both arms up and reached in the air saying, come Allie, and took her last breath. Daisy died October 8, 1864, and was laid to rest here with her brother Allie, who died only seven months earlier at the age of six from scarlet fever. Her sister Nellie, or Helen, preceded them in death, and all three are buried together in this unendowed section of Plot 25. I think this is really a, just a fascinating cemetery. There's so many old graves. A lot of people that have filled these graves were people who came out to California during the California Gold Rush. I'm sure this individual is one of them. As you can see there, his name is Bushrod Triplett who was born in Frederick County, Virginia, May 1820, and died in the city of Stockton in 1878. And there's some burbage there on the bottom. This is one of the oldest cemeteries in California for sure. Little 
Daisy is over here on the other side of the black marker. But I was walking around here and I couldn't help but notice this very sad marker for a baby. Look at this, Kenneth Ryan Wilkinson. He was born June 84, which was the same month that my son, my first son was born. This child, however, lived only one month and 23 days. My parents termed that as a unforgettable days. How sad. And there's a picture of a little boy right here. Mommy misses you. Wow, that's sad. If you can only imagine the sorrow that Daisy Dryden's parents felt when they lowered her into the ground here on that day so many years ago, 1864. Now, Abraham Lincoln was still president then. Reverend David Dryden and his wife Sarah, Daisy's mother, moved to Gilroy where they lived out the rest of their lives. David died on an unknown date and is buried in Gavilan Hills Memorial Park in Gilroy alongside Sarah, who passed away on June 21st, 1900. Her sister Luella, the one who sang to Daisy before her death, died in 1938 and is buried in the El Carmelo Cemetery in Pacific Grove. So I know that there's a lot of stories about people on their deathbed who see through the veil, who get to see people coming, see Jesus, see loved ones. I think it's totally reasonable if you're a person of faith to, to imagine that as you're dying that you're able to see through the veil because you're going to a place where you're going to remain forever. So I'm curious what you think. Do you think that Daisy Dryden was making this up or do you think her mind was just delirious with fever? she was just imagining it all? Or do you think that she was actually getting to see into the spirit realm as she faced her final days? Leave a comment. I'm curious what you think. And always, I appreciate Mr. Bird up there making a lot of noise. I always appreciate you giving us a thumbs up. It helps us to promote our channel. We're a growing channel and we certainly appreciate all the support that we get from people. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.